Um, you often feel more tired when getting up in the morning than the evening before. So some of the challenge aspects of this personality tendency to be occupied excessively with spiritual matters, therefore to be a little earthly good. There can also be a tendency toward foolishness, self-deception, and a lack of restraint. There is often a lack of self-love and a need to be healed. So this is you and me. I think this is really speaking to us. I think it's really speaking to you, maybe, but it's got nothing to do with me. You don't think any of that nah, has to do with you? It's a bunch of crap. No, it has nothing to do with me. Okay, so anyway, those are your bottles. Okay. I'm glad we did this. I feel yeah. like we've made some real progress. Mm -hmm. in yeah, <laughs> I don't think it's worth the, 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 the megabytes that it filled. Okay. Okay, so we Nobody, have... Nobody's in the chat room. Nobody's in the chat room. Because, it's because the uh, sound is so god awful. All right, can, I, can we go on to another thing? Yes. All right, uh, every week we've been doing what's called the uh, lab... The labs. <laughs> the Rabs and Levy Review. All right? Mm -hmm. And just to explain real quickly where it is, is um, it's a segment where we uh, discuss a non-Jew in yeah. the history of... Uh, in history who had some sort of a fact or involvement or connection to the Jews when we discuss them. Adrian Beltre. Uh, Adrian Beltre tonight would definitely be a person we want. A non-Jew who's had an effect on Jews, because I'm sure there are Jews who are affected by the home running. Yeah, I was very affected by it. Yeah, but, I mean, you were practically in tears. So I asked, the, what I'm doing again is I'm asking uh, people who are watching the video mm -hmm. uh, to give us the name of a non-Jew who they would, in history, who they would like us to speak yeah, about. Yeah. Viewer Michelle, I asked the question last time. And viewer yeah. Michelle said she uh, she read she said the following. She asked about Winston Churchill. Yeah, you've heard of him. Yeah, and she asked about his policy regarding Jews and the Jewish homeland. Was he really a supporter and defender of Jews, or was he wanting to relocate the Jews out of the United Kingdom due to anti-Semitism? Okay. Have you ever asked yourself that question? I always thought Winston Churchill was a friend of the Jews. Okay. So here's my answer. Okay. One claim I found especially laughable was the idea that Churchill was an anti-Semite. Yeah. Okay. You would agree with me? Yes. After reading an excellent book on the matter called Churchill and the Jews, have you ever heard about this? There's a book called Churchill and the Jews by the well-respected historian, and I believe his name is Martin Gilbert. Martin Gilbert. You've yeah. heard of him? Yeah. And I've read many Jewish. of his books. I met him. Told him I've read all your books, but 50, because he's written like 60 books. He's Jewish, right? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't. Sure. I can't tell yeah. if he was Jewish or not. Yeah. It's wiki big. It seemed like he's Jewish. Yes. Oh, he is. And yes. you've met him. Yes. So you wanted to. He say spoke at Sinai Temple. Oh, okay. See, these are the places I can't go to. So. <laughs> uh, do you want to go deeper on it? Um, he's a very well. He's the official biographer of Winston Churchill. Okay. And what did you get from reading that book? Uh, he's just. He's just very. He's a, he's a good writer. He does. No, no. What did you think about Winston Churchill based on that book? I don't remember. Okay, well, for me... But I've would, always thought of Churchill as very pro-Jewish. Yeah, it's plain to see that the opposite of anti-Semitism would be the case. In fact, Churchill was a philo... Is that how you say a philo-Semite? Philo-Semite. Philo-Semite in a time of history when anti-Semitism was ripe as well as being from... Uh, as the, You know, there was so much anti-Semitism going on in the world back then. Yeah. So for him to be not that way was a huge step. Yeah. Right? As well as Churchill was from an upper-class background... And the upper class backgrounds back then were notorious for their anti Semitism. Yeah. For Winston Churchill to be none of that shows just how many steps he was away from that kind of mm -hmm. anti Semitic thinking. Right? Um, uh, when Churchill's comments about Jewish revolutionaries mentioned on working class Tory, and that's what people point to as saying, oh, look, he's right. an anti Semite. You know about this? Yeah. Do you want to say it or? Oh, well, just that when uh, Bolshevism took over Russia, exactly. uh, Churchill said was dismayed at the number of Jews that were involved in Bolshevism and playing key roles in Bolshevism in Russia and the number of Jews who were communists. So while few Jews are communists, many communists, or the leading communists, were Jewish. Right. Uh, so those, so his comments were taken completely out of context because he was worried about communism and mm -hmm. unfortunately some famous Jews like Trotsky were involved with communism. He wanted to stop this as he believed that that wasn't true Judaism. And he's right, you know, because the mark that the Jews should be is the Jews should be involved in Torah and, and, and living a life of right. Torah and mitzvahs. And, and, and this is what the Jews should be. And this is what we, you know, 
should be remembered for. Yeah. Not, you know, oh, look, the Jew is doing the communism, and the Jew is the Bolshevik, and the Jew is doing social justice. Jews are involved in social justice. It's a Catholic concept, but we're involved in Jew That's what we stand for. Yeah, right. And equality. Jews are always right there in the front lines of equality. Equality, yeah, and equality goes against Judaism. Okay, so yeah, this, this is what we're famous for. Um, that statement, in my opinion, was an aberration, and if you look at Churchill's numerous statements on Judaism, he shows himself as a true friend of the Jews. Would you agree with that? Yes. In fact, the Nazi's armaments minister, Albert Speer, in later life, said to Martin Gilbert, that Churchill had a fault. He was too fond, quote unquote, too fond of the Jews, right? Churchill was known to have Jewish friends such as Rothschild and Castles, is that their names? And these friendships caused suspicions amongst his peers in Westminster who feared that he was turning into a Jew lover. Churchill famously opposed the 1905, the 1905 Aliens Bill that aimed unfairly to restrict Jewish immigration from Eastern Europe which was against the established attitude at the time. It highlighted Churchill's renowned bravery. And lastly, Churchill was also very much against appeasement to Hitler and said you can't appease a dragon. Yeah. So I, I, I would finish by saying based on everything, and I think Luke will back me up, and Luke Lady will back me up on this, that Churchill loved the Jews, fought for the Jews, stood up for the Jews, and I got, no pro I got no problem with it. Absolutely. So when he was setting up a state of Israel, it wasn't to expel the Jew from United Kingdom, I'm going to say that he was just like Harry Truman and wanted to have a homeland for us because he favored us. Yeah. All right, and that concludes this week's Rabs and Levy review segment. Please keep your topics coming to us. If anybody has questions about, um, what's the guy's name? Winston Churchill? Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, we can do it again or anybody that we've mentioned in a previous show. Keep your letters coming. Keep watching our shows. Right? And, um, you know, we know we're famous. We know we're reaching everybody right now. Yeah? So Brad Gabbard, I guess he's a rookie. He's the quarterback for Jacksonville now. Okay. Looks like he's driving. This is a really, you know, here, this, is, this is what we got going on, folks. We've got a football game that's three quarters in and it's six nothing. We've got a baseball game with, that could actually surpass the six nothing total. Because there's six points in this game, we got a baseball game with four points, right? This is going to be very exciting to see. Can the baseball game outscore the football game? Yep, I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> <laughs> so, in this week's Torah portion, okay, it's Noah, okay, which is Genesis chapter six through near the end, through the end of chapter eleven, okay. So, uh, I was reading a book by Rabbi Ari Khan. Uh, can, can I say something before you start? Yeah. We were talking about Lush and Hora earlier, mm -hmm. and we said that, uh, that it's brought down in the Talmud that to even listen to Lush and Hora is, 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 is part, it, it, it's an avera. Mm -hmm. you're, not, you're not allowed to do it. Mm -hmm. There's another thing that's not allowed to be done in Lush mm -hmm. and Hora. You shouldn't mention a person's name. Mm -hmm. When you know that there's somebody else who doesn't respect that person's name, right? And if you res if you mention that person's name, right, you're going to cause somebody else to think really bad thoughts, right? Because like if I if there's a bunch of people that don't like Luke, right? You know, like all the women on my Facebook, right? They can't stand you, right? right. And I say, oh, lady, this, oh, lady, that. It's just going to piss them off, right? Because they don't want to hear about you and your fecal matter and you and and your genitals and you and, and all this, they don't want to hear about it, right? right. So I'm not going to mention Levy in their presence right. because it's going to, it's like, so that's something you want to focus on is that you don't want to mention people that you know are going to drive me crazy just hearing their names. People like Dennis Prager, right? You know that I think the guy is spoos a lot of heresy. It's better not to quote him. All right. That doesn't apply to a show. That applies to interpersonal relationships. But I'm right here. It doesn't matter. You're not going to change like a show and like stop citing a source, or I'm not going to stop talking about what's important to me just because it upsets you. In interpersonal relationships, like this, I'll give you an example. Okay. Um, you're not supposed to remind someone of their past, of their being a convert, or, or of their past. Right. Like that's true. But when it comes to journalism, 
Um, I remember I noted uh, like half a dozen well-known Orthodox rabbis who were converts. And one of them, 